respected <coughs> Minister for the Information and Technology, Government of Tamil Nadu, and the Principal Secretary, Health and Family Welfare Government of Tamil Nadu, Dr. Satyanathan, the Director of the Institute of Mental Health, Vandana, <coughs> and other friends. <coughs> I thank you. Ms. Vandana for giving me this opportunity to be with you today. I think the, the meeting has had a good start with <coughs> nice preamble by Dr. Mohan Aysar. See, since 1976, I am in the field of the psychiatry. I entered into mental hospital in 1976. What I think about this uh, district mental health program, because I, am, I was attached. Yesterday only I retired from the common service. <coughs> I was attached with the district mental health program also. I think the district mental health program is a very good idea. But what I request is, <coughs> Every program must be evaluated thoroughly and see that how effective it is. For the evaluation, very important thing is you would have to do a survey before the start of the program. And then you must assess after the every year and tell about after five years what happens. Then only we can say that whether the program has been effective or not. It is not by mere spending the money and then you say that the program is effective. For example, if you take, <coughs> for example, you take Thiruvallur district, you take one block, you do the mental health program throughout the district, but at least one block must be a sample block, model block. You must see what are the number of cases see. After five years, how many cases are occurred, what is the incidence and what is the prevalence, and what is the morbidity. Because of the district mental health program, the morbidity has it reduced. There must be a model evidence for this particular program. I request the administrators to allot some fund for this model unit of each district mental health program and then say that this particular program is effective or not effective. If it is so, you work on the details, why it is effective or why it is not effective. There must be evidence for this particular one. Second one is the two words are highly confusing in psychiatry. See, rehabilitation. Do you really mean rehabilitation in psychiatry exist? I have my own doubts. Because, as Dr. Mohan Isaac narrated, from the institution, people are now taken to the community. The community treatment is being misinterpreted or misnamed <coughs> as rehabilitation. That's what I think. There is no question of ending the treatment and then you rehabilitating to the prior level. I think nothing happens like this in psychiatry. The main form of thing is deinstitutionalization. From the institution, the persons with mental ill are taken to the community and they are trying to be retained in the community. Is it called rehabilitation? That is where I have my own particular doubt. The treatment continues. The main focus is only the making him to continue the treatment and making him to live. So I think that is where the problem comes. The rehabilitation is usually a non-medical people's job in any faculty. But in this community treatment, the doctors play a role in psychiatry. So there is always a crossroads. There is always a class. Is it my job or it is your job? 
I think this community treatment should be identified differently and the rehabilitation should be identified differently. If the treatment is effective, definitely the disability is going to be minimal and the rehabilitation burden going to be much less. These two things must be separated. Third one comes to my knowledge is, we call it as mental health program. We are only talking about mental illness. We are only talking about treating mental illness, providing treatment, providing drugs. Is there any part that you promote mental health? See, that is a very important aspect which this mental health program should concentrate. For example, you take the other faculties, diabetic checkup, BP, whatever it may be. They identify and they say that how to promote health rather than how to treat illness. But most of this program spends time on identifying the illness and treating it. Yes, it is a need for that. But there must be equal important or importance should be given to the promoting mental health. For example, I went to a couple of villages, a couple of taluks, almost all the districts in Tamil Nadu I met have given the introduct lecture for the DMHB. Where people ask, what is mental health? You say there is absence of hearing voices. Is it true? Everybody wants to be mentally healthy. For example, when you meet a person, first thing what do you ask, how are you? How do you do? Everybody is caring only about their health. The same way, does anybody ask anything give importance about the promoting mental health? We are all talking about reducing the mental illness or identifying the mental illness, which is highly stigmatizing, people won't come and it won't reach. You say that by doing these things, you will be living mentally healthy. I think many people are on the lookout. Everybody wants to be mentally healthy, but nobody able to tell. So all the, when there is an intellectual vacuum, automatically so many unscrupulous elements get into that and they say that we promote mental health. So what happens is, there must be a definite program on defining mental health, whatever may be the level, and say that if you do all those things, you will be remain as mentally healthy person. There must be some criteria for mental health. That's what you identify, see what happens in blood sugar, you identify the normal blood sugar level, anything away from it is pathological, very easily identified. So you try to reach to that level. Here we don't say any optimum for mental health. Then you say that you treat or promote or whatever you may then you are at blank. <coughs> when I myself is confused, how can I make other people to be much more clear, isn't it? So there must be a, some area that we must define mental health and we must be able to say that these are all the criteria of mental health. Then you say that if you reach that level, I think you have come to the mental health level. Not bothered about all those things. See, even I used to tell my patient, hearing voice, if it is beneficial to you and the community, it is a, actually a blessing, it is not a disease. If the hearing voice is detrimental to you as well as the city only, it becomes a disease. Not hearing hearing voice is a disease pathology. The same way, I think we must be able to, I think, really, I feel very sad that such a qualified people are there, such a highly red people are there, informed people are there, still we are not able to say that this is the mental health. If that must be there, then we can say that you go to that level, I think you are improved. Or you are not at that level, I think you need. <coughs> so what I usually tell is in the meetings, the whole population is divided into mentally healthy at one end, another end is mentally ill. Mentally healthy is a utopian concept, nobody including myself. But mental illness is easily identifiable. There is no need to suffer at all. Everybody knows that so-and-so is mentally ill. They are not troublesome at all, easily treatable. But the whole pathology comes, is suffering comes because of the mentally not healthy and mentally unhealthy population, which harms the majority of the population. That area must be given some importance how to promote mental health. With these things, I think we go ahead, automatically the program will be much more received and much more effective.
So the few points are you must do some pre-study at least in each district a sample one. After every year I think this must be evaluated. Then you must see that what are all the lacunas or difficulties. Clearly try to get clarification what is rehabilitation and what is community treatment. I think what I am seeing is the community treatment is being confused with the rehabilitative measures. Then we must promote more amount of beds in the hospital setup. Then only I think this problem will be solved. You must find out there, yeah, chart out how many beds must be there in the minimum in all medical colleges. How many beds must be in the luxury headquarters hospital? How many beds in the uh, Talik headquarters hospital? Then the mental hospital should be available at least at the five regions of the state. It should not be only one mental hospital. A person in Karnayagumari should go to somewhere in the south. I think it must be four or five regional mental hospitals with less than 300 or 500 bed strength. Anything goes 800 and above bed strength, I think the administration will be a problem. If the best thing is going to be 300 or 500 less, I think the hospitals will be a very, very better managed hospital. Even to, for me to take rounds for the 1,800 bed strength hospital, about 30 acres, I think it will be only once in 15 days or once in a month. If it is in the 300 bed or 500 bed, I think it will be very effectively. So like few things, if you do that, then the existing mental health program will be a boom. Thank you.